Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk on neurotransmitters and their receptors. So neurotransmitters can be defined as a chemical which are synthesized in the neuron, released in the synaptic layer, and upon release binds to the receptor present on the synaptic or synaptic membrane. Then ultimately the synaptic cell or synaptic cell will give a response to the neurotransmitter. But for a for any chemical to be accepted as a neurotransmitter, there are certain criteria. The first one is that it must be synthesized in the neuron and the enzyme to for its synthesis must be present in the neuron. So it, uh, the condition is that it cannot be synthesized outside the cell and incorporated uh, and transported into the cell. The neuron must have the enzymes for synthesis inside it. <coughs> Then the neurotransmitter must be, then the substance must be released in the synaptic layer in sufficient amount so that it can elicit a response from the post-synaptic neuron or any other cells located in the effector uh, organ. And there must be mechanisms for removal or inactivation of the neurotransmitter after its release from the synaptic cleft. And we'll see why the particular heart factor is very important. And the chemical must give the same effect if given exogenously also as that of the endogenously released neurotransmitter okay coming to the classification of uh, neurotransmitter neurotransmitter can be uh, classified into two groups based on its size so simply small neurotransmitters and large neurotransmitter the small neurotransmitters are as the name indicates, relatively small single molecules, whereas these large neurotransmitters are polymers of a particular subunit or units. So these are the examples of small molecule neurotransmitters, which includes acetylcholine, certain amino acids and their derivatives. Then in casopurine, ATP, and biogenic amine it comprise of dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. And serotonin, which is also known as 5 hydroxytryptamine. The last but not the least, histamine. And the large neurotransmitters, that is the peptide neurotransmitters, <coughs> are usually peptides. Heavy C236 amino acid residues. <coughs> so these new transmitters are synthesized in the neuron itself. But within the neuron, the site of the synthesis of small neurotransmitters and large neurotransmitters are different. In case of small neurotransmitters, they are synthesized in the synaptic terminal or nerve terminal from its precursors. <coughs> and these precursors may be transported from the extracellular region or some of them may be transported from the cell body. But the enzymes uh, which are involved in the small neurotransmitter neurotransmitter synthesis 
are transported from the cell body as you know enzymes being protein will require this protein synthesis machinery which includes ribosome and other require uh, organelles which are normally not present in the synaptic terminals in case of large neurotransmitter these large neurotransmitter being peptides are similarly synthesized as that of proteins they are synthesized from the <coughs> Synthesized by the ribosome and packaged into the vesicles and transported towards the nerve terminal. So they are already synthesized in the cell body and transported as synthetic vesicles towards the nerve terminal. And there is another difference between these two. Mm. The enzymes which are responsible for synthesis of these small new transmitters are transported from the cell body through a very slow transport system. Whereas these mm large new transmitter containing vesicles are transported transported towards the nerve terminal by a fast transport system new transmitter can also be uh, divided into two groups based on the response or effect it has on the postsynaptic cell if the neutron if the binding of the neurotransmitter to its receptor on the postsynaptic cell leads to the depolarization of the membrane of the postsynaptic cell then that particular neurotransmitter will be called excitatory neurotransmitter If the neurotransmitter, when it binds to its receptor on the postsynaptic cell, leads to hyperpolarization of the membrane, then it will be called inhibitory neurotransmitter. Again, you see here why it is called excitatory because depolarization of the membrane of the postsynaptic cell will help in the generation of an action potential whereas hyperpolarization will inhibit or make it more uh, less probable of generating an action potential in the postsynaptic cell So here are some of the major uh, new transmitter and their uh, functional properties. So today we need to see uh, acetyl choline as an example. Uh, on the other side, uh, the new transmitters may have two different types of receptors uh, one type is called the ligand gated ion channel receptor and another is the G protein couple receptor in case of ligand gated ion channel receptor the receptor itself is a ion channel but normally in the absence of the new transmitter the channel remains closed so upon binding of the 
specific neurotransmitter, the channel will open. And opening of the channel will lead to the movement of specific group of ions. For example, uh, we will see later that esteroid colony has such type of receptor. So upon binding of esteroid colon will lead to the movement of positively charged ions, <coughs> which may be sodium ion, calcium ion, or potassium ion also. <coughs> Depending the direction of the movement of the ion will be decided by the gradient of the particular ion across the membrane. The other group there is the G protein group of receptors do not themselves directly act, act as ion channels. But upon binding of its specific neurotransmitter, it will lead to the activation of G protein to the receptor. Then this activated G protein may again generate other effector, effector molecules which may ultimately lead to the activation or synthesis or opening of ion channels and depending upon the specific ion channel it may either lead to the movement of positive ions or negative ions and it may be in the both direction depending upon the concentration of the particular ion on the uh, sides of the membrane. So coming back to esteroid colony, those uh, neurons which produce esteroid colony are called cholinergic neurons. <coughs> and these cholinergic neurons are found in both central and peripheral nervous system. And they are the most uh, well studied example is the neuromuscular junction where a motor neuron innervates a muscle cell. So, acetylcholine being a small neurotransmitter is synthesized in the synaptic terminal from acetylcholine and choline while in the choline acetyltransferase and this acetylcholine neurotransmitters will be transported into the synaptic vesicle through a vesicular acetylcholine transporter then after on arrival of a appropriate not impulse this Acetylcholine containing vesicle will fuse with the membrane and release it into the synaptic plane. Immediately after its release, some of the acetylcholine will bind to the receptor present on the postsynaptic membrane, whereas the remaining acetylcholine in the synaptic plane will be attacked by acetylcholine esterase. Which break down breaks down this acetylcholine into acetate and choline, and this choline may be uh, taken up again by the presynaptic cell to the choline transporter along with a sodium ion, <coughs> which provides the energy. Then this acetylcholine receptors may be of two types. One is called nicotinic receptor and another is the muscarinic receptors. In case of this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, there are the receptor as ion channel and those receptors which act as ion channel are also known as ionotropic receptors
they are called nicotinic acyl choline receptors because nicotine which is an alkaloid produced by uh, or found in the lips of tobacco can bind to the this simple in receptor and can give the same effect as that of acetylcholine. So, <clears throat> but this nicotinic uh, uh, nicotine can only bind to these ionotropic receptors. They cannot bind to the other type of receptor that is the G triple receptor. So, those. Uh, ion channel receptor or acetylcholine are classified under nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptor consists of uh, usually consists of five subunits, and these five subunits. Is mainly formed by <coughs> these different uh, chains. So, by different combination of these chains, it will form different types of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So, it's not that there is only one nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. There may be different types of Protein acetylcholine -like receptor dependent upon the particular tissue or the particular postcytic cell. Yeah. <coughs> so, in case of this nicotine acetylcholine -like receptor, uh, two acetylcholine -like will bind to two alpha subunits. So, normally uh, they have two alpha subunits. And there are 10 different types of alpha subunits, so at least two of them will be used to form a nicotine acetylcholine receptor. And these two alpha subunits are the, has the binding site for the acetylcholine. So upon binding of the acetylcholine, it will open the channel. The another group of uh, acetylcholine receptors is this masculinic acetylcholine receptor. These masculinic acetylcholine receptors are G protein couple receptors, so they do not act as ion channels. Usually, uh, they consist of a single protein and there may be different types of these masculine receptors but all of these uh, receptors has seven transmembrane helix it means it crosses the membrane seven times so on the cytosolic side has the G protein binding site and just near the extracellular surface of the protein, it has the binding site for the acetylcholine. So this I have already discussed. The acetylcholine which is released in the sanitary clip must be removed immediately. Why? Because so that these neurotransmitters do not keep on binding on the receptor present on the post cell. And this is uh, again uh, important because if it keeps on binding to the receptors even in the absence of an instruction from the pre cell, then this presynaptic cell cannot control the 
four sine six here. So, <coughs> so the an appropriate response is given every time an action a nerve impulse or action potential arrives at the nerve terminal. The spin calling must be removed immediately. <coughs> In case of spin calling, as we see here, it is removed by this spin calling asterisk. And this spin calling asterisk is very uh, highly active enzyme, uh, which can remove uh, 5,000 spin calling molecules for breakdown 5,000 spin calling molecules in one millisecond there is a very highly active enzyme <coughs> so, so let us see some of the clinical uh, connection between the topic that we have discussed today there is a disorder called myasthenia gravis uh, approximately 25 to 125 in every 1 million people worldwide is affected by this particular disease and this disease is caused by the antibodies or more specifically autoantibodies which bind to the nicotinic acetyl choline receptor what happens is that when these antibodies bind to this acetyl choline receptor it prevents nerve impulse or uh, the neurotransmitter from binding to the acetyl choline receptors so <coughs> the muscle cannot contract properly so ultimately it leads to muscle fatigue which sustain or repeated activity Okay, uh, this is a news item which was published in February 23, 2017. Here, a person named Kim Jong Nam, uh, which, is a, which is the half brother of Korean North Korea's leader, was killed by a Nerve azel called BX. So, what is this BX? BX is a acetyl choline esterase inhibitor. So, it inhibits the activity of acetyl choline esterase. It inhibits the activity of acetylcholine esterase so it prevents acetylcholine from breaking down into acetate and choline so what will be the consequence because of this there is accumulation of acetylcholine in the kinetic cleft which will lead to uncontrolled muscle contraction and because of this, there will be violent contraction followed by sustained super contraction. And uh, ultimately, <coughs> all the muscles will get paralyzed. And sustained paralysis of the diaphragm muscle causes death. So this is, and this particular nerve is in justifies that this enzyme is very important or more particularly removal of the neurotransmitter after its release from the kinetic cleft into the 
दिल्ली की जो साइंटिस्ट है आई हैव बीन यूजिंग सर्टेन बुक्स फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ दी स्लाइड्स सो यू कैन गो टू दीज बुक्स Okay, bye.